All right, one of the applications of geometric series is to keep track or predict the price of certain consumer goods over a period of time. And of course, you may have noticed the price of some goods steadily increase over a long period of time. And we call this phenomenon inflation. But I guess one of the negative aspects is the purchasing power of your money or the purchasing power of the currency that's in your pocket diminishes over time due to the steady price increase. Now, there are certain government institutions, for example, in the United States, it's the Federal Reserve, which tries to keep inflation low. They like to keep inflation at about 2% per annum or 2% per year. So let's use this and see how much we can expect to pay for a cup of coffee in 10 years time, assuming that the rate of inflation remains at 2% per year. So a cup of coffee in year one, let's say it costs $4. $4 for a latte, sounds like a reasonable price. After 12 months, how much do we expect this same cup of coffee to cost? So in year two, let's just say here after 12 months, we would expect a price increase of 2%. So we still start with a $4, but we have to multiply it by a growth factor of, because the price has increased by 2%, the growth factor is 1.02. Remember that 2% as a decimal is equal to 2 divided by 100, which equals 0 0.02. Growth factor, let's call it GF for growth factor, would be equal to 1 plus 1 plus the inflation rate. Let's call the inflation rate I. So I equals 2%. And in geometric sequence terms, the growth factor is simply equal to the common ratio of R, as we established in our previous post. So we have four times the growth factor, and that's equal to $4.08. Okay, what about after another 12 months in year three? Well, this time we start at $4.08, and the price has grown by another 2%. So it's multiplied by the factor 1.02 again which to the nearest cent is $4.16. After year four, another 12 months, the starting price is $4.16. Multiply that by another 1.02 in year four, and to the nearest cent, it is $4.24. Now, the reason I've written it like this is because instead of writing the previous year's price, so instead of writing $4.16 for the starting price in year four or the ending price in year three, what I'm going to do is bring down the expression that we had from above. So let's write $4 times 1.02 here. That is the starting price in year three or the ending price in year two, multiplied by the growth factor of 12 months for 1.02. So I should say that this is here a 2% increase per 12 months. Similarly, for year four, we have $4 by 1.02 by 1.02 and multiplied by another 1.02 to get $4.24. So let's write this now in a more familiar form, we can continue this pattern onwards. We see that the A value, the starting value or the scale factor is the original price for a cup of coffee, which is $4. The common ratio is equal to 1.02. And we learned in the last post that to get any term of the geometric sequence, so the nth term is simply equal to a by r to the n minus 1. So in year 4, which is t4, we indeed have, let's write it here, 
multiplied by 1.02 to the power of 4 minus 1. So 4 minus 1 equals 3, and if we plug this into a calculator, we should indeed get $4.24. Okay, so what about after 10 years? So following our formula, we have T10 equals A by R to the power of 9, which equals $4, our starting price, by the growth factor 1.02 to the power of 9, which equals $4.78. Alright, so in year 1, your latte cost $4. In year 10, the same latte, the same cup of coffee costs $4.78 due to it increasing in price by 2% each year. We call this compounding growth because it is growth on top of growth. So clearly the increase is 78 cents. In percentage terms, how much has the cup of coffee increased? Well, this would simply be 78 cents divided by $4 by 100%, which works out to be 19.5% approximately. So it's close enough to 20%. So you can consider this as after 10 years, you have lost 20% of your purchasing power, at least for this cup of coffee. And while that might sound like bad news, well hopefully if you have a good job, your wages would have increased by more than 2% per year. And hopefully this would have offset any cost of living increases. But also if you have invested your money in a good savings account or in a good fund, hopefully the increases every 12 months in those investment vehicles will have increased your purchasing power more than what you have lost as well. And we'll look at those. So the segue or the flip side of inflation that works in your favour is a phenomenon called compound interest. And we'll have a look at those in future videos. So stay tuned for those. Okay, before we go, let's have a look at the graph here, which is a plot of the price over time. And the relationship of this green line here is P for price equals 4.0, which is the starting price, by 1.02, which is the growth factor, to the power of t, t for time, which is analogous to the relationship for a geometric series A by R to the power of n minus 1. Now in this case, R equals 1.02, which is greater than 1, which according to our last video means we have exponential growth. So this curve does indeed depict exponential growth, but as you can see here, with a low inflation rate of 2%, at least in the first few years, the first couple of decades, we can see that the growth is approximately linear, which gives a good insight as to why institutions like the Fed like to keep inflation rates low, because it takes a long time before prices really start to exponentially grow. In fact, it takes about, so if we start year one with our price of coffee at $4 per cup, for that price to double to $8, which is here, it takes about 36 years. All right, so the price increases year on year really aren't too noticeable with a low inflation rate of only 2%. So that'll do it for this video. If you have found it useful, please hit that like button. As always, please subscribe to my channel for more videos that may help you with your math studies. Share this on social media with your friends. Best of luck with your studies and I'll see you on the next video.